For most of human history, we've spent our daytimes outdoors in sunlight. And our evenings, our evenings were like this. The only source of light after dusk came from burning wood, wax, oil. And these things were unaffordable luxuries for many people. There was no nightlife. People would rise with the sun and retire to bed early. Then, 140 years ago, this happened. <sighs> Electric lighting has transformed the way we live our lives, enabling us to work and socialize around the clock. Without it, you wouldn't be able to see me standing here now. Any prolonged indoor work would give us eye strain, and our evenings would be dim. So on balance, electric lighting is a great thing, but it also has a dark side. About 12 years ago, I found myself in Las Vegas, the gambling capital of the world. At night, the Las Vegas Strip is reportedly the brightest place on earth, and people flood outside to take in this incredible neon light show. But in the daytimes, the streets are deathly quiet. You've got these chains of underground shopping malls linking one resort to the next, actively discouraging you from stepping outside, if you're even awake. Las Vegas has flipped our traditional relationship with day and night on its head. I was in this topsy-turvy city covering a conference for New Scientist magazine. I had awful jet lag. And after several days of being cooped up inside a windowless meeting room, and my evenings being hauled around bright casino floors, I was desperate to just get outside and bask in a bit of sunlight. But I couldn't find anywhere to sit. Eventually, I found myself in the vast underground maze that is the Caesars Palace Resort and Casino, surrounded by mock Greco-Roman architecture and glimpsing what looked like daylight up ahead. Finally. But when I got there and looked up, what I saw was this. A beautiful but completely fake sky. It made me start to question our relationship with light in the modern world and whether all this artificial light is such a good thing after all. Las Vegas is extreme, but our experience of light today is very different to even that of our great, great grandparents. And it's taking its toll on our health, our sleep, and our relationships. Because the thing is, our biology is set up to work in partnership with the 24-hour cycle of light and dark on this planet. Inside every one of our cells, there ticks a molecular clock which controls the timing of pretty much every biological process, from when we feel sleepy and awake, to when we release hormones, to the activity of our immune cells, and to the very chemistry of our brains. They're called circadian rhythms, and our bodies really are different places during the day compared to at night. In some people, these molecular clocks tick along on slightly under 24-hour schedules, whereas in others, they're closer to 25 hours. And yet all of us manage to stay synchronized to the time of day outside on this planet Earth. How? The answer is light. When light hits a subset of cells at the back of the eye, just behind the rods and cones that allow us to see, it's like pushing the reset button on a stopwatch. Those eye cells speak to a tiny patch of brain tissue, which functions as the body's master clock, tweaking its timing. And then it sends messages to all those other clocks around the body, keeping them synchronized with day and night as well. But actually, 
when we see that light is also important because it tweaks the timing of our clocks in another way. Most people will identify as larks or night owls, people who like to wake up early or who just don't function in the mornings and like to stay up late. These things are largely determined by our genetics, but light influences them as well. If you see light early, it makes you more lark-like. But if you see it later, in the evening and at night, it makes you more of a night owl. That's fine if you can choose when you get up to go to work or school. But if you have to get up early, it can mean you cut short your sleep. And sleep matters. Not getting enough of it makes us less coordinated, less vigilant, less able to solve problems. It makes it harder to regulate our emotions or read the emotions of other people. Our memory suffers, and so does our health. Sleeping for fewer than six hours a night makes you four times more susceptible to catching a cold. Longer term, chronic sleep deprivation has been associated with every major non-infectious disease going, from Alzheimer's to type 2 diabetes to cancer. It affects our relationships as well. People who sleep for fewer than six hours a night have been shown to display more unethical or deviant behavior in the workplace. That could be falsifying receipts, taking credit for other people's work, or being mean to colleagues and employees. That unpleasant manager you know might be a nicer person if they just got a bit more sleep. Tell them that. <laughs> and rethinking your light exposure can help you to achieve that goal. Several years ago, I decided to find out what would happen if I reverted to a more traditional relationship with light. So, working with researchers at the University of Surrey, we devised an experiment which would measure the impact of me turning off the lights after 6 p.m. and spending more of my daytimes outdoors. I wore a device on my wrist to track my light exposure and sleep and filled out numerous questionnaires to assess my mood and alertness. I embarked on this experiment in December, when the days are their shortest and darkest. Persuading my family to live like this took a bit of work, even some bribery. My six-year-old daughter burst into tears when I first suggested it. But mummy, it will be spooky, she said. No, come on, it will be great, just like going camping. We could use candles. Does that mean we get marshmallows? Said my four-year-old son. Several bags of marshmallows later, we had a deal. <laughs> but living like this created other challenges. Preparing dinner was tricky chopping onions in the dark, an outright hazard. We even managed to undercook our guests' dinner on New Year's Eve because we just couldn't tell if their meat was cooked. But it also had benefits. My husband said conversations felt more intimate when they were conducted by candlelight. When friends came over, they commented on the relaxed atmosphere. Also, on New Year's Eve, when we had to put eight three- to seven-year-olds to sleep upstairs, I kid you not, they were all asleep by 9 p.m. If you could bottle this darkness stuff and sell it, I'd be a millionaire. But of course, we can't, because light and darkness are for free. Spending more of my daytimes outdoors was another revelation. I couldn't completely give up on indoor life because my work requires a desk and a computer screen. But I moved that desk next to a south-facing window 
and I lingered in the park after school drop-off, making my to-do list on a park bench with a cup of tea. I cycled to work, I ate my lunch outdoors, and I took regular wa walks around the block with my co-workers. I also exercised outdoors, swinging kettlebells in the park or running through the allotments rather than going to an indoor gym. And it changed me. Once a week, we measured what time I started to release a hormone called melatonin, which we produce in the evening and it helps to prepare our bodies for the nighttime. The reason we did this was to get an idea of what time my internal body clocks thought it was. And what we found was, what on, was that on weeks where I turned the lights after, off after 6 p.m. or spent more of my daytimes outdoors, the timing of my internal clocks shifted one and a half to two hours earlier. A similar shift has been seen when groups of people are sent camping, but it happened to me while leading a relatively normal work and family life in a house in central Bristol. I felt sleepier in the evenings, but also more alert and more cheerful when I woke up, more larkish. But it also happened when I didn't worry so much about my evening light exposure, I just made more of an effort to get outdoors during the daytime. And that's important because it suggests that we don't necessarily need to give up on artificial lights and electronic gadgets if we can brighten our days. Similar patterns have been seen in other, larger and more carefully controlled studies as well. One of them found that on average, office workers who spent their mornings and, and daytimes exposed to bright light took 18 minutes to fall asleep at night compared to 45 minutes on average for people who spent their mornings in dim light. They also slept for 20 minutes longer each night, experienced less disturbed sleep, and had lower depression scores. There's even evidence that being exposed to bright or blue spectrum light in the daytime can buffer your body clock against the effects of artificial light at night. It stops them from shifting later. Think about it. If you can shift your body clocks one and a half to two hours earlier and allow your brain to register when it feels sleepy by keeping the lights dim, you're going to want to go to bed earlier and therefore allow yourself more time for sleep. And dim is the key word here. It doesn't have to be candles, but dimmer switches, table lamps, and warmer colored light bulbs are what we should be aspiring to. The same goes for electronic screens. Keep things warm and dim, like firelight. Brightening your days and darkening your evenings can also increase the amplitude of those circadian rhythms, making them more pronounced. And that's important because flattened circadian rhythms have been associated with more disturbed sleep and poorer health. Today, we light up our evenings in a way our ancestors never did. And we also spend about 90% of our lives indoors, where it may be bright enough to see. But even on an overcast winter's day, it's at least 25 times brighter outside. In summer, it may be 500 times brighter. We need to get out there and embrace that light. And for many of us, that means learning to embrace the outdoors, whatever the weather and whatever the season. I now look forward to the tranquility of an empty park on a bright December morning, with the sunlight glittering off the ice crystals in the grass. I still prefer the summer. But bad weather no longer stops me from getting outside. I need to. And you do too. So my challenge to you is this. I don't know what the weather is doing outside right now, but assuming it's daytime, I guarantee it will be brighter outside than it is indoors. Take a break, step outside, and allow your eyes to soak in that bright daylight. It will give you an alertness boost, meaning you're ready for more TED Talks. 
And assuming you get enough of it, you will sleep sounder tonight. For millennia, humans have lived in synchrony with night and day. But you don't have to go back to the dark ages to brighten and electrify your lives. Thank you. <laughs>